Yep. So here we are. Welcome to Unblinded Sales Mastery. Do we have a fun day or what? We have the one and only Vivian Guzman, who is here with us. Vivian, how are you? Woof! I'm spectacularly splendiferous. Well, there we go, Vivian. So uh, yes, so as, as MC co-host for today, as role player for the next uh, several, for this entire week. So Vivian, thank you so much for being here. And what is present for you? What's present for me is that we have an extraordinary lineup of beautiful women that happen to be powerhouses today that I'm going to introduce to you. All right. So let's, let's get into it. So who we got? <laughs> we got Mona Zalatan, and she is a grateful and proud self-made millionaire, real estate investor, businesswoman, and sales master who put herself in a position where she could retire in her 20s. She's Whoa. a successful senior sales executive and speaker for over 25 years. She started at the age of 13, has focused for the last 10 years on enterprise sales, software sales. Mona has consistently crushed quotas, ranking her the 15th best salesperson at Salesforce Globally out of 20,000 and awarding her as the best sales speaker at SAP out of 5,000 sales executives. Go, Bono. Wow. Impressive, impressive resume going there. 13 was like, you know, child labor laws are being violated. Well, what <laughs> how are you? I am doing amazing. How are you, Sean? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, so there will be no uh, unfair bias. Judges, we're having equal call the shots. So Vivian, who else is up for today? Welcome, Mona. <laughs> we have Hala Haludi. She's a partner at Caligi Law, and she heads the personal injury department. She practices in all areas of personal injury, including automobile accidents for over 20 years. Prior to joining Caligi, Hala founded and was a senior partner in her own law firm. Hala has successfully handled thousands of personal injury claims and has obtained $9 million settlements and verdicts on behalf of her clients. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it happens to be her birthday today. Happy oh. birthday. Oh. Happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Hala had a $17 million uh, settlement resolution, but I think even more incredibly is Hala's urgency and caring of her clients. So Hala, welcome and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Happy to be with you guys. Yeah. But Mona did say that she's going to whoop your butt on your birthday. And last night, <laughs> well, we'll her. see about that. But Mona was trying to cheat last night, I heard. Yes. Oh, so my all, God. All I asked Sean, I said to Sean, are we still doing, you know, are we still doing the, the pain and strategy and the emotional rapport first and then doing the two other ones after? He's like, you're asking me a question. I'm not supposed to answer anything. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So he did yeah. not. Yes. All right. Happy birthday, Hala. Now thank I know it's your birthday. Mona. I kind of want you to win. Oh, uh, thank you, Mona. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and so who else we have, Vivian? So we have three judges today. We have Kirk Adams, president of the American Foundation for the Blind, a longtime champion of people who are blind or visually impaired, and is committed to creating a more inclusive, accessible world for the more than 20 million Americans with vision loss. Oh, Kirk, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm terrific. I get to be a judge and uh, see my friend Mona, my new friend Halla on her birthday do their thing. Oh, and, and Kirk, it's an honor to work with the AFB um, and to be part of the board. And uh, I'm so thankful for you being here and the incredible work you're doing in the world. And it's an Thank honor you. and privilege, sir. And we have Vivian. David Gonzalez. He's the founder of one of the leading joint venture partnership agencies, simply the coolest affiliate management agency, which helps its business clients to generate more traffic and sales. Amazing. David, what's up, brother? How are you? If I was any better, I'd be Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, and dude, like you like have all kinds of books and bestsellers and things in the world, like straight up like bad A genius. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here on the other side by being a judge. I was, uh, I was, a, uh, <laughs> I was a, uh, a contestant just uh, less than a week ago. And it, wow, what an amazing experience. And uh, I'm honored to be here as, uh, uh, sitting on the judges table. Like, I'm looking forward to this. And David, you're crushing it on the other side. So welcome <laughs> back. And I think Vivian, we have one more remarkable person. Yes, we do. We have Kavon Massenberg. He's a 24-year-old entrepreneur and inspirational speaker. It was at his, the lowest point in his life 
that his life's purpose was discovered from within. And that's when his life transformed like never before. It's now his life's purpose to inspire and guide over a billion people to find their life's purpose. Yeah. Kavan, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Sean. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderfully. And Kavan, um, congratulations on coming back from um, extraordinary adversity and challenges to be leading an amazing and incredible life. I appreciate it, Sean. It's through amazing people like you that uh, I'm able to be here and have the impact. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Kavan. So uh, with that said, for anybody that doesn't know what the real raw is, it's not just like five or six or seven of us, I guess, in total, uh, two participants, three judges, the role player, and just a little old me all hanging out. Like, that's fun. And I love these people. But we're here to really demonstrate this. Influence is a superpower. We have it here. And you can get it. And then understand what to do with it. For influencers to influence influencers to merge ecosystems to make the world an even greater place. That's what the unlined, unblinded real world role play is about. And the way we do it is this: we we start from the presupposition that it's not about yes, I can influence or no, I can't. Yes, I'm great at something or no, I'm not. It's about mastery. And mastery is a never-ending journey for the next level breakthrough. Because whatever the results that we have here, most people do want more. And that more sits in the space of that next level breakthrough. And that's what Unblinded Real World Role Play is about. Unlocking that superpower of influence, mastery at the next level. We have masterful uh, women influencers here today, Hala Jaludi, Mona Zalatan, and we are ready to rock and roll if these amazing women Hala, are you ready? I am fired up. Mona, are you ready? <laughs> you ready, Mona? Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Absolutely. Yes. So since you are um, less than 100 feet away from where I'm presently seated, uh, Hala is going to be the away team. So Hala, I have numbers of fingers under the desk. Uh, it is for you to pick. I have a coin toss. What numbers do you pick? W one, one or two. I'm sorry? One. It is two, unfortunately. And I promise I did not cheat, Hala. All right. And so Mona wins the toss. So Mona, you can go first in the first round and retain your choice in the second round, or you can just go uh, second in the first round and then keep your choice into uh, that second round. I'm sorry, and then how would I have choice in the second round? So which way would you like to go, first or second in the first I'm round? I'm gonna go first. All right, so Mona's gonna keep her choice in the second round. Judges, David, Kirk, Kavan, here's what we're doing. Mona's gonna be working on going from hello to yes, but it's in two segments. The first segment is three minutes, then there's gonna be a pause in the middle, a stop, and you're gonna score it, like write it down now. So you have a score, don't think about it later, you have to write the score down, right? Have it. And what you're scoring Mo and Hala on in round one is how much does the other person see their future in them? How open is the rapport? How much is the listening of Vivian um, hearing them, right? And um, how much has Mo and Hala, how much have Mo and Hala opened up some level of pain, need, wanting, and made Vivian present to it because we all know, and if not, need to know, that people unfortunately don't make the decisions to empower their life from a place of benefit. They make it from connecting to something that's wanting and the realization that if they don't say yes, then there's something missed out and lost. So first round is how much they see their future, open listening, which is Vivian see your future, in the uh, participant and how present is any sense of pain or loss. So with that said, and they're not trying to get a yes in round one, it's in the middle. And Vivian, you're gonna of course be answering questions. Moan is gonna be moving just rapport building and opening up pain. And you're gonna give her like, hey, yeah, I got about three minutes. And then about one minute, say, yeah, I just got about one minute to go. And then at three minutes, I really gotta take this call now. We'll continue in a moment. Does that sound great, Vivian? Uh, am I keeping time? Is that what's happening? Yes, please. Oh, hi. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a quick uh, just uh, housekeeping thing. I've got yeah, a call please. to be at at the top of the hour. So, um, and we'll, we will move through rapidly, brother. Okay. All right. Yeah. In honor so wait a minute. So just so that I get it. Um, so I, I have three minutes and then at the one minute mark, I'm supposed to say there's only one minute left. I forget. Yeah, I got to grab that call in about one, like be in the middle of your answer. But yeah, I got about one minute to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So right. Right, kick us off again. Sean, that's how something really weird is happening. I just got it. I'll take you guys with me. 
my, my, my family is driving by to wish me a happy birthday. They want me to look out the door for one second. Is that okay? <laughs> and then, okay. Participate. Oh my goodness. So, so, cool thing. so we'll all, I don't know what you can see. Where's everybody? Tell her, tell her I'm outside. I have a second. I am on a Zoom call. <laughs> right. Unprecedented moments. Oh my God. Real, real rock is there they are. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, my God. Happy birthday to Hannah. Hey. <laughs> this is just real eyes. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Love you. Thank you so, so Vivian, much. Vivian, you were on television. Was this normally happening? Oh, my God. Don't fall out of the car, guys. I'm sorry about this guy. <laughs> oh my God, this is Thank awesome. You. We got balloons. Love you guys. Thank you. Oh, oh the happy birthday banner. Aww. <laughs> oh, we couldn't God. have planned for this. It's a procession of like Thank cars, John. Love you all. <laughs> oh, for me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, Tiffany, can we, we mute Halla for a moment with her, her birthday, and then we'll move on to Mona um, moving, moving through. Is that cool? Well, could, I think you might want to start from the top, Sean. They muted after you were halfway through. Yeah, so, so how about this? Um, Vivian, let's kick it off with Mona and take it through. Mona, can you hear us? Yes. Awesome. So, Vivian, you ready? So what is the scenario? What am I doing? How do I know her? What's you're just going to listen to her. You guys met in an unblinded seminar and she's going to take you from there. You're just yourself. Okay. But you didn't, you don't know each other yet. That's the only difference. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Mona, fire away. Okay. Awesome. Hello, Vivian. Well, hi. How are you? I'm great. Oh my God. It's so nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you from Shinwei. Really? Yes. You know Shinwei? Yeah, I know Chinway. Oh my God. And I've been watching you and oh my God. <laughs> the amount of energy you have is insane. Really? <laughs> yes. You're jumping up and down. You're all around. You're participating. It's awesome. Thank what brings you. you to the event? You know, it really was Chinway. You know, she really wanted to to come to this event and I wasn't so sure. And then, you know, some of the friends decided that, you know, they were also going and then I thought, oh my God, it's like a party. So I guess I have to go. Mm. It sounds like fun is on top of your priority list. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was more about learning something, you know, I, I had gone to Jack Canfield before that. Oh, and, uh, and it, I'm, re I'm new to the, so the self-help world in many ways. So I was curious, you know. Oh, well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome when people actually take the time to go to events like this, because a lot of people talk about being open and wanting to learn more, but not everyone takes the actual time to do that. And this event is three days, right? Yeah, it was three days, but it didn't feel like it. Really? Mm-hmm. So what was the best thing for you about the event? Wow, that's a good question. Um, it just spoke to me. It, it was, you know, it was, um, you know, I went there thinking I had answers like I knew. And then I just discovered that I wasn't really that self-aware. Mm. And it just, I started to dial down little by little, day by day. Mm. And there were so many things that spoke to me about uh, the event. Mm. Answers about what? Um, well, you know, one of the first things I really liked was that Sean had encouraged us to go ahead and walk. And I had never been, I don't, I don't know anybody who's blind. I'm going to sound really idiotic right now, but, uh, <laughs> and so my whole perception of blind people was completely different. And so at certain points I'm like, can he really see from the stage? Cause he's walking really close to that. <laughs> <edge."> and, <laughs> and then he encouraged us to go ahead and walk and talk to anyone and to that was blind in the community. And so I did, and I found myself actually walking to uh, Kirk across to his hotel and, 
it was just so interesting. It opened up a whole new world. Then I started talking to Dave Steele. And at the end of the night, I saw um, Orly, who came up and spoke and said she was a chef. And I'm like, what is happening right now? My whole world was rocked. I'm like, my people are... Oh my God. Oh my God. That is so amazing. Oh wow. About 30 seconds. 30 seconds got carried away. Oh wow. Yeah, no, it sounds like you had a really good time and you made some really great connections. That's awesome. It's the blind community. There's a lot to learn from, from them and it's awesome that you got to connect with a lot of these people. So if you had to have it, like if you could have it like all your way and the event would have been like, oh my God, that was the best event in the world. What would you have gotten out of the event? What would you, would have been like your, oh my God, this was exactly what I was looking for. And this was awesome and perfect. Um, I kind of felt like it was by the time I left. So I don't think anything was needed. Oh my God. That is so awesome. I was I crying. I saw Sean with his family up there and it really moved me everything everyone oh my god i am so happy for you that is just so friggin awesome All right. time first half great oh. job mona let's hear from mona everybody <laughs> Five of round vivian great job so um excellent mona what is present for you um that when she said that there everything was there i didn't really know what to say because usually someone says that <laughs> there was something that so either she w didn't have enough rapport with me to open up yet or that she really just thought the event was freaking amazing and there was no i was trying to tap on on some pain and look for some pain around that yeah so uh i think you did outstanding and i saw maybe one access point to pain earlier in a limited window when Vivian said something to the effect of, yeah, like I thought I had all the answers, right. but then I realized I didn't. Right. And maybe in that moment, it could have been like, wow, like about what? Which answers? So Vivian, if I were to say to you about what, like which answers? You said you weren't that self-aware and all of a sudden you're like, you weren't as self-aware as you thought. Mm -hmm. You got answers, like what answers about what? Um, I... <sighs> There's so many. I'm not a great listener, so I had no idea how much lack of listening I was doing. <laughs> That's one of them. <laughs> okay. Um, I had no idea how egotistical I was. Wow. See, Mona, Mona, we- There's a we, lot there. Now we have pain, right? Right. Now, you have, now Vivian's saying how egotistical she was. So the key, first, first of all, fantastic job. The depth, the energy exchange, congruence, all those things, fantastic. You were asking questions that took Vivian deeper, opened things up about how she felt about blind people, whatever. So in that moment when her certainty was disrupted, like you heard her admitting that, or uh, opening to that, right there was what it was. And like, ego, wow, Vivian, ego about what? Right, and now we're, we're taking her deeper into your pain, which she still is, is going to be related to things that she wants in her life. Your question, if you could have it all your way, like fantastic question, right? Fantastic question um, as well about herself. If you have it all your way, like what's your dream, what's your legacy? and then tying those other pain points in, in the second half. Does that make sense or no? Yes, do you remember the question that I did ask her when she was talking about the questions? Uh, I don't remember exactly the question, but you were in a beautiful rhythm of just like exploring and just like, you're like maybe it was what brought you there. It was like in that vein. Yeah. And so it was right there. And then it was like, yeah, so I thought I knew. It was like chin way and I thought I knew and it was kind of like a party and I was like, whoa. Like, and it was like some moment like that. Got it. Yeah. So awesome job. I, not though. Awesome job. Awesome. <laughs> so this is about like unlocking more congruence, energy, transfer, present, depth of listening, all fantastic. So great job. So um, Vivian, judges, we go, we score after the whole first round. So uh, Haller, are you back from celebrating? Congratulations. How much love is that? Like driving down the street, there's like a caravan of cars. Oh, there you go. That was very sweet. That was very sweet. Um, Sorry about all the commotion. No, congratulations on uh, a beautiful celebration. Yes, those are my uh, nine brothers and sisters. And family. That is fantastic and beautiful. Congratulations, <laughs> Hala. Nine brothers and sisters, that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> so one of 10. So Hala Jaludi, one of 10 on her birthday. Vivian, three minutes, take us in. Uh-oh. Um, okay. what's, my, what's my scenario again? Your scenario is whatever you want. First half is, Building emotional rapport, accessing pain. As and, you see fit, it's whatever you want to do. And Hala, your your mic is might need to be adjusted. I don't know if that my mic? Yeah. You're a little bit low. Um that's 
it sounds almost like you're on a Bluetooth, but your Bluetooth speakers are, or my headphones are somewhere else. I'm not sure why. It says it's on the loudest. Okay. Well, is, this, is this any better? Marjan, let, let's roll it and we'll try to switch it next time. Just like okay. lean and speak up. How about the scenario what I do? Um, you, you just do it. You're on, go. But how would she know who she's playing? You met at, you met, uh, you met at, uh, okay, actually, who would you like her to play then? Because we're going with I you guess, met. I guess what? she's an injured um, client who is reluctant, doesn't trust attorneys. Yeah. And you met an unblinded, you met an unblinded. Vivian had had a, a, a car accident. You heard her, overheard her talking in a blinded. Take it from there. Hi, Vivian. It's so nice to see you again. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm well. Um, so I'm so sorry to hear about your car accident. How are you feeling? Um, uh, woo. Uh, I'm okay. Um, you, there was a little hesitation there, I heard. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty strong. I, I feel like, I think I'm gonna be okay. Oh, well, I hope so. Um, and what, how has this accident affected you? said you're going to be okay. Are you currently treating for your injuries? Well, I've been icing my back and I've been icing my ankle and my knee is really hurting me a lot right now, but um, I'm a lot better than I was a week ago. I'm sorry that you're going through this, Vivian. Um, so Vivian, I know that um, you, you uh, part of what you do is that you love to cook. You cook really fabulous foods, right? I do. Um, and how is that going, the cooking with the, with the injuries, with your ankle and knee pain? How is that going? It's been a little challenging, so I'm simplifying some of the meals, and my husband helps a lot around the house. And, and I see, you know, I hear in your tone you're a little bit frustrated. Um, it seems that this accident has had an impact on your lifestyle. Injuries can be really painful sometimes. Yes, they, they can. Um, so Vivian, um, I understand you know, you're reluctant to um, go ahead and make a decision about retaining uh, the services of an attorney. Um, can I ask you why that is? Um, I, I, I just want you to know that I have to go in like about a minute. Um, uh, well, my husband doesn't think it's a good idea that I talk to anybody right now. Mm. Why is that? Why does he think it's a good idea? Well, it's, well, I'm not sure that if I, that I, that I can talk about it because, um, well, I don't want to get in trouble with the law. Okay. Well, um, I just want you to know that, um, anything you say to me would be, of course, protected by attorney client but um, there's, I, I, I'm hearing the weight of the- 30 world. seconds. Um, look, you know, Vivian, um, if there's anything that you want to share with me now, um, I'd be happy to listen to it. It would be in strict confidence. I appreciate that. Do you have a business card? Maybe I'll think about it. Absolutely. Look, wherever you decide to go, wherever, um, just know that I'm here to listen. And um, whatever you decide, but just to, for your own protection, I highly recommend that you talk to me, whether you choose to retain me or somebody else, um, just to ensure that you are protected. I hear the hesitation in your voice and the uncertainty. So um, I'll be happy to listen to you. Excellent. Uh, so half time. let's hear it for Halla Jaludi. Halla, what's present for you? besides birthday and caravans of balloons? What's present for me is that, um, you know, having the three minute time, uh, you think about it, but when you're actually in, in, in it, it's, it's a lot more difficult than you realize. So the time constraint. Also, Vivian played the role really well. She was a, a hard nut to crack. Um, she wasn't forthcoming with any of the information. So it, it, it kind of was difficult to dive deep you know, any deeper than that. But in general, I feel good about it. No, awesome. And judges, we're going to get to scoring and feedback in a second. So Hala, I think you did great. You're in the formula following process. Very impressive. And so 
um, what potentially is an access is leaning right in. So just Vivian, let, let's just role play for a second. So Vivian is, we're at, at the stage of, you know, hey, Vivian, how are you? Vivian's in low uh, tone. And then it's like, Vivian, I'm, I'm hearing that it sounds like um, energetically you're not doing great. Are, are you okay? Or how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, what's, what is present for you? It's really hard to get around the house and go up and down the stairs right now. It takes me about an hour right now. Oh my God. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. And how long have you been in that state? Three weeks. Oh, okay. Um, and and um, is this, I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of hesitancy. Um, is this a conversation you're comfortable having? Like, you know what I do for a living, right? I am an attorney and mm -hmm. I'm here to be supportive, but is this a conversation you're comfortable having? Well, there are other reasons why I don't feel that liberty to talk about it. Wow. Um, okay. Um, may I ask if you do have counsel? Uh, no, I didn't even know that I could get counsel. Wow. Okay. So, um, again, let me just share this. Not pressing, but if you don't have counsel, um, I'm not sure what would prevent you from chatting. We have an attorney-client privilege, just so you know, because we're speaking, even if I'm not hired by you, but that's how it works. And um, I, I'd love to be supportive because if you haven't been able to get up the stairs for three weeks, there's so many rights um, that you have in the interim that you may be unaware of. And I'd love to be supportive if you want that kind of support, even right now for a couple minutes, but I'm hearing hesitancy. So what's happening? Well, I just... I'm a new immigrant and I don't want to get in trouble with the law. Wow. Understood. Um, so you know that whatever your status is, that that's privilege between us. Okay. Is that, okay. You have and a privilege. It, and so with that certainty, does that increase your comfort of having a conversation right now? Absolutely. Okay. So, right. So ha it's leaning into the objection, tonality, questions like leaning right into what's wrong what's upset and remember we always talk everybody in agreement formation like and and it's in revealing truth so vivian may never talk to anybody because she feels that she has questions about her status legality so she has an objection that on the other side of it is her being unblinded to truth and so the way that we handle objections is to lean in to put them on the target the board like right the bullseye put them in the middle and blow them up in integrity, not, not overpower them by questioning into them. Right. And Vivian, did you feel like I pressured you? Did you feel overwhelmed or what did you feel? Well, I, in my head, I'm like, I had like two storylines that I was going to use. So I really wanted to uh, explore what it would feel like if I did share it. So in a way I kind of gave in just, you know, because I felt safer somehow. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So you felt heard, listened to, mm -hmm. safe. Yes? Yes. Awesome. Because I was present to your objection, not anything in my own head, but present to you. Did you feel that? Yes, okay. I did. Okay. So let's see what the judges thought because, yeah, we have amazing people. So David, what's present for you, sir? And if we could go with, because I know we're on a real uh, timeline of, uh, you know, sentence or two in the positive, well, maybe a word of what's present for you with Mona, uh, then Hala, and then a sentence to positive, sentence to opportunity for growth, and then a real score for each, if you don't mind. Okay, what's present uh, in one word with when Mona went was enthusiasm. Um, and um, it's a, just one word, right? Yeah, and then, and then, and then, and then a sentence to a positive, yeah. And then, oh yeah, and then an area for improvement? No, no, yeah, a couple sentences positive, couple oh, sentences. Okay. Yeah, so like the, the level, like it, it felt like you were at a party. It felt like you were BFFs. It, it felt just, you know, really connected. Um, there were, and then this areas for improvement that, what, with all that good gooey love. Um, I, you know, there were a couple of areas where, a couple of points where you guessed at things like, oh, this, oh, that. And she, and, and uh, Vivian was like, well, no, not that. And, and so, um, but there was, there, it, was, it was all encapsulated in such a, a powerful enthusiasm 
bubble that it wasn't a big deal. Um, yeah, so I rated you an 8.7. Very nice. Yeah, Mona brings a ton yeah. of enthusiasm, hearing, love, inclusion, right? So outstanding. Thank you, David. Kirk, yeah. what's present for you? A word about, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, David, how am I? Sorry. Yeah. Word, positive, growth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, word is incisive and clear. Um, it was it was really powerful how um, you went from being like very nurturing to going right into hey what's going on and and then bounce back and forth from being nurturing to some of that Zeus to uh, nurturing and um, yeah I, I the area for improvement. Gosh, that was that was hard because it was you know you had thirty seconds. Um, I would say with knowing that there was thirty seconds to create an opening for us for a follow up, that wasn't a business card because then it uh, did you, I don't know what it is because I'm not a, at a nine point nine yet, but I feel confident that there was something that you could have done to have created a, a, an alluring opening for her to want to come back enthusiastically to you. Awesome. And I gave you a 9.2. Whoa, look at David dropping, dropping some. Uh, <laughs> awesome so Kirk, uh, sir. Yeah. What is present? Yeah. So well, these, from- guys are, these guys are tough graders. I'm giving Mona a nine and a half and uh, half Whoa. because half she got Vivian to name drop me. So there's the half point. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Mona was just very warm and enthusiastic as I know she is. And she, she acknowledged uh, Vivian throughout she asked open ended questions and um, you know, got to a point and that that's the point where I, I would say room for improvement because Vivian said that she had a life transforming experience and you don't hear someone say that every day so that was the place where I would have um, probably explored well, I, I don't know if I'd gone would go past that point I, I probably would have wanted to hear a lot about that very nice, Kirk. Very nice. And so how about for Halla? Oh, for me? Uh, Halla. Let me see what I wrote. I, again, I'm, uh, I'm easy peasy. 9.6 for Halla. So uh, uh, I, I heard sympathy. I heard her notice Vivian's tonality and her emotion. She, one time she said, I noticed some hesitation. One time she said, I noticed some frustration. And she also asked uh, good open in the questions. I think the um, one area for, for improvement, you know, perhaps just um, relating a personal experience that she had had. That's the one thing I thought of or, a, or a, an experience one of her other clients had had. So Vivian seemed new to the law, new, new to how everything works. So I thought maybe a story or an example of uh, how Hala had helped someone in the past. All right. Awesome, Kirk. Thank you. And Kavan Massenberg, what's up, brother? What do you got? So, uh, Mona, you did great. Um, so the good things is that you were really kind of connecting with her, right? Kind of how everybody says, kind of like a party, like you guys were friends. Um, Vivian was like lighting up, talking about it, right? You can see in her mind, it's just like taking her, taking her back to, to that time at the Unbinded event. Um, the things that I feel like that, there was access in is I think at the beginning you mislabeled her. Uh, you said, Hey, it seems like fun is at the top of your priority list. Yeah. When you said that she kind of gave a hesitancy because it's just like, she didn't want to relate to herself that way. Like that is at the top, right? You said we're brought you to this event and she said, Oh, I heard about it. I want the information, but my friends were coming there and I was like, okay, cool. Since everybody's going, I'll go also. But like labeling her fun at the top of the party list made it seem like the fun was more important to her going to get the transformation. And I felt like she felt that a little bit because she kind of like a little hesitancy back. Um, but I think the access point for that was kind of to piggyback off them says it's even at the end when you said, hey, what would, the, what would you change? She started to get a little emotional because she was like, oh, it was great. And that emotion is access to like, wow, like what really got undiscovered for yourself, right? Like what really was a life transformation? So I think those were two different access points of um, when she said, I thought I had it all figured out and I was egotistical. Like that was access right there. 
But then at the end, when she started to kind of get emotional, kind of thinking about the recap, that that was uh, access point to kind of dive deeper in with that as well. But I know the time right now at the end. Um, so I gave you a nine out of 10. You did great. You did great. And Kevon, that's great feedback, brother. That, that's awesome. So thank you. And what do you got for Halla? Halla, awesome. I feel like Halla, you had a, a more uh, difficult situation because you had to like kind of create a, a whole scenario um, on the spot. Uh, but with that, you did great. Uh, you pointed out the hesitation, um, even what she did. You did a good job labeling the frustration, saying, hey, you seem like you're kind of frustrated that uh, got her to the point. I think that when you, there was access in when she said she didn't want to dive into it because she, I think she said something to the effect of she didn't want to get in trouble for like legal reasons or something like that. So in my mind, I was access to point out like, and to create a space that was comfortable for her say, hey, listen, whatever legal troubles that you think might, this might get you into, just know that I'm here for you, right? It could have been like she might have thought that, in my mind, it was like she was drinking or something. That's why she got into an accident. She didn't want to say that, right? But there would have been access to kind of lean into that and say, hey, listen, that whatever way you feel like you're wrong in this situation or everything, like, we're here to help. And we could, I don't know the wording, but that might have been access to kind of lean into what her hesitancy was, right, with that. Um, so I gave you eight out of 10. You did great. And, uh, for the situation that you created, it, it was great. All right. So here's what we got. We got Hala Jaludi, personal injury attorney extraordinaire, Mona Zalatan, sales executive being judged by David Gonzalez, Kavan Massenberg, Kirk Adams, right? And we have a dogfight going into the second round. Round two is all going to be about delivering your heroic, unique identity to solve for the pain into the agreement that you're seeking. What's the yes that you're seeking? That's what's happening here. And if you haven't accessed the pain fully enough, you can dig in a little bit, sharing your heroic unique identity story, tying it into solving their pain into agreement. And Mona, you, and that's what we're judging on judges. Mona, you retain your choice in round two. So do you want to go first or second? First. All right. So are you ready to go? Yeah, so in this case, uh, Vivian is basically a potential client of mine. I work for Salesforce selling software. Does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So you build rapport, right? You've accessed some pain already. So maybe you could just acknowledge it, repeat the pain, and move into your heroic, unique, unique identity, agreement formation. Vivian, we're a lot more here seeing how, and judges, how Mona and how to present themselves into the pain they establish right up front. Like, so like, it will sound like this. So, hey, Vivian, I'm understanding you guys got some real software needs and challenges here. Um, thanks for sharing all that and your frustrations, your life story. Can I share a little bit about myself and kind of what we're up to? Would that be okay? Like that's the, the segue and then move right in with heroic unique identities, um, personal professional solutions, and then agreement. Sound good, Mona? Perfect. All right, Hal, are you all good? Yep. So, so this am is, I I'm, again, Mona? <laughs> yeah, and so, so I'm- so I met you at the event and now I just found out you work for my customer or city or someone that is a customer of Salesforce. Okay. okay. And I'm hearing from Mona and Hala some Zeus energy very present because these are two uh, loving, goddess-filled, fun, aspirational women who also can drop into Zeus and I hear it beginning to drip. Do you guys hear that? Kirk <laughs> Adams, David, Kavan, you guys hear that a little bit? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, oh, the scores? Like, Mona oh, wants to go yeah. first. Yeah. Like, that. Yeah. So Mona, so Mona, one more time. You're going first or second? First. First. Here she goes. Vivian, take us in. Three minutes. Hi, Mona. Hi. So, so I hear that you work for City, and I think it's um, an awesome company. And I understand that you guys are having some challenge and that your boss is not necessarily recognizing you for some of the work that you're doing there. Yeah, we're, uh, we're taxed. We're exhausted. We have used all the manpower to address some of the software needs that we don't have that haven't been met, nor are they listening to that. Oh, my. Um, can I tell you a little bit about myself? Would that be okay if I took a few minutes to tell you a little bit about myself? Please. I want to tell you about myself a little bit. I'll start with a story, actually. Um, so I find that a good way to explain to you and to people who I really am is to start when I was a teenager, because then you don't really have any filters. You're just who you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, I remember my first day in high school when I just came into that side of school, my very first day, 
there was this girl, she uh, was being bullied. I don't even think we had the term at the time that was called bully. But there was all these guys around her making fun of her because she was a little bit overweight. And um, I felt really upset about that. And when the guys left, I went to her and I asked her name and I started talking to her and she ended up being a really good friend of mine. And I remember going up to my locker and my last name is Zaltan, so it starts with a Z. And the guy beside me was Val and starts with a V, so he was beside me. And he was sitting on the floor reading a really big book and it seemed like he wanted to be like invisible. And so I started talking to him too. And it just seemed to me that there were some people in the school that just wanted to be invisible. And I was always so attracted by the underdog. I always wanted to help people feel seen and to feel really good. And that was always such a huge priority for me. When I started working uh, at the age of 16, I started working in sales. So uh, working in sales when I was 16, I was working in retail in a leather store. And I was so good at it. And the reason I was so good is because I was asking customers like, yeah, it might be five, $600, but how do you feel when you wear it? I'm, I'm serious. Like, $500 for a leather jacket that you're going to wear for 20. I still have some of my leather jackets from that. I, I swear I still have some of them and I take care of them. And it's so important to me that people feel so good. So coming into sales, when I continued being in sales of retail, I stayed in leather for many years, moved on to software sales. And I was actually ranked the 15th best salesperson at Salesforce globally. And when I was working for SAP, which is another software company, I was ranked number one for the speaker of the sales engagement that I had. And the reason I was always so successful is because I always wanted the people I work with, my customer, to feel amazing. So it's never really about the product. It's about the people. So how can I make you shine? Last year with US Bank, I helped them save $150 million. And when we went to the event called Dreamforce, the event basically, I wanted to make sure when I got on stage, that I recognized my client. If you want to go on stage, I got my customer US Bank to come on stage last year because I really wanted to recognize them I'm for sorry. what it is that they did and how they felt about their job and how they basically took the products that we have to shine and show your, your boss and your company and basically the engagement and the commitment towards city to be able to shine yourself and show your light and all the work that you're doing and have it recognized. So this is what I want to do. I want to sit down with you for 30 minutes. And the worst case scenario basically is that you learn something more from Salesforce. But here's what I want to do. I want to sit down with you. I want to do the same exercise I did with you as bank to see how I can save you guys millions and millions of dollars and therefore make you shine and get you recognized for the awesome work that you're doing. Excellent job. Excellent job, Mona. How'd you feel? Awesome. All right, Vivian, what was present for you? Um, she immediately got me in when she started talking about the stories as a teenager and how she was, you know, approaching people. And I loved her kind heart in going for the underdog. And I related to that story. I felt, you know, invisible. Who doesn't feel invisible at different points of their lives? And then later on, I got a little lost. But at the end, I like how she brought it back together and kind of said, you know, I'm just going to champion for you so that you could come out like a rock star at Citibank. And clearly, I already had said that it wasn't going that well for me at Citi and I wasn't being heard. So she kind of tied it all together for me. Yeah, no, awesome, awesome. All right, Hala, are you ready? Yes, so I'm going to continue with my scenario. Great. <laughs> Vivian, you ready? Hold on, let me get my clock. Okay, I'm ready. Three minutes, go. Vivian, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. I know that was very scary for you. And uh, I want you to know two things. Number one, you're protected by attorney-client privilege, um, even at this point because I'm talking to you as an attorney right now. And number two, should you go forward, this, your status, your immigration status will not be jeopardized. I want you to know that. Um, having said that, Vivian, I appreciate hearing your story. Would you mind if I shared a little bit about myself? Please do. Vivian, actually, it is so ironic that you said you're worried about your immigration status because your issue is precisely the reason I became a lawyer. I'm an immigrant as well. I came to this country at the age of three years old and I watched my parents struggle 
as immigrants to make their way in a new country without speaking the language. And I watched them being scared. And that's when I decided that I wanted to be a champion for those people who don't have a voice, for the underdog. And for 25 years, I have been now, as an attorney, relentlessly fighting for those people to be their voice, to, to, to make them heard. And you know what, Vivian? This, my fight to, to have people like you have a voice and feel safe and feel protected is every day. That is what drives me. Even if I have to go to the Supreme Court, like I did, to represent a very injured person whose accident occurred in South Africa, and I went to the Supreme Court and fight, fought for his rights to be heard and ultimately settled his case for 17 million. Or a woman I represented who was not severely hurt, but she was in pain and most other attorneys would have settled her case for five or $10,000. I went all the way, tried the case on her behalf and got her a verdict of 300,000. One minute. So Vivian, I, what I do, what I'm proud of doing is being that voice for people such as yourself to protect you, to make sure that you feel that you are seen and heard. And Vivian, what I ask is, before you do anything, whether you choose to retain my services or the services of another attorney, I'd like to schedule a time for you just to talk to me for half an hour because I wanna make sure that you're protected, that you're not taken advantage of, and that you know your rights. The consultation is free. How does that sound to you? Sounds lovely. All right, so can we schedule something? What's a good time for you? How about tomorrow? Are you free? Mm hmm Okay, I would love to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaha. Excellent. Vivian, what's present for you? Um, you know, at the end, she really brought it home when she said, you know, that it was a free consultation because I was worried about that. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that she was so passionate and she was so heartfelt, like she was emotional as she was trying to say, this is my cause. I mean, she was touching her chest and she was getting overwhelmed. She couldn't even speak. It's like, girl, you are my ideal client. And that resonated for me. And then she mentioned two examples, the $17 million person. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. I never even could dream that big. And then she mentioned that there was another person. So, and then she mentioned she went to the Supreme Court. I'm like, wow, this woman is like a warrior. So, I mean, I, at first I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to afford this woman. And then she said the consultation was free. And then she made me feel safe that, you know, that everything about my information was gonna be protected. So I was feeling really good about the whole experience. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. How a present for you? Um, I felt good. I was passionate because I was lucky in this scenario because this is my truth. And you know that. So um, it was really from the heart. And uh, again, it's just, you know, can I do it in those three minutes? So, you know, I'm, so, I'm rushing By it. the way, you weren't lucky, right? Mm -hmm. you, saw the, you saw the access, the connection, the commonality, and you shared into it. So with that said, David, I know we have a, a tight seal, a tight limit on your time. So let's jump right in, brother. So what do you have for, let's start with Hala this time and then Mona. Okay. For you, for, you uh, my one word, uh, or two words would be power and confidence. Uh, the extended sentence to that would be, uh, it was, you know, the, the, the level with which you were able to convey uh, that, that there's arguably nobody better to be working with was magnificent. Um, the area for improvement would be uh, your unique heroic identity was at the be at the opening part of it was a little long winded, and then you brought it back in. Uh, I literally wrote Titan UHI, and then then you brought in the Supreme Court case and this other case, and then I was like, oh wait like keep it to just the Supreme Court and maybe one thing, like just drop those two things really quick because it just, boom. The other area for improvement is you didn't elicit any objections um, that were to, to be revealed so that you could speak into them or lean into them because 
you know, for all you know, she says she's going to show up, but then she doesn't because she's still got the thing of her husband, but she mm. doesn't know how to say no to such a high powered powerhouse. Um, so nice. nice access, David. Very good. And what yeah, yeah. Score? Uh, 9.2. Whoa, beautiful. And for Mona? Uh, Mona, I, uh, I say again, influence, smooth, uh, really inspired, um, this deep connection, um, uh, like I wanted to buy whatever you had because it's like, I think everyone, even, uh, even the same bolt could relate to being an underdog. Like anyone has had the feeling of being an underdog, no matter who you are. Um, and the f access to, you know, improvement would be again, uh, no objections revealed so that you could lean into them. Um, because it might be that, that, uh, Vivian, you know, might, might be like, oh, well, I'm going to look bad to my rep at whoever they're currently working with or anything like that. You just went right for the thing. So instead of like um, giving your unique hero heroic identity and then saying, hey, this is what I'd like. And what, what, would, what would have you have any resistance around that? Like just asking for it. And she says, absolutely nothing. Like I want to meet with you now. Then you know you're good, but otherwise you didn't know. And uh, also give you a 9.2. Like they were both fantastic. Awesome job. So quick access points. And David, if you have to jump um, when you do to take yeah, your call, yeah. great. I want to okay. thank yeah. you. Um, sure. Quick feedback from me. So you just hear it if you have time. Yeah. Is I think that um, for Mona, I think fantastic job. Love the story. I might, I was like really like contemplating this in the moment. I might switch. So it's, it, it, it creates a beautiful contrast to be like, so listen, um, yeah, thanks for sharing about your, your software needs. I share a little bit of myself. Yeah. So um, I want to tell you about a client. I, I want to tell you a story. I saved you know, whomever $150 million. That's what I think I could do for you. But that's not the story I want to tell you. I want to tell you about when I was 14 years old. And like just reverse, like just that little, because now it's like you're super credible. And now you're dropping into your heart. So it's like Zeus and then like beautifully into your heart back to Zeus at the end. So sometimes like Zeus back to goddess to Zeus is beautiful. So um, yeah, like just, just have a little bit of like scotoma contrast. Does that land mode or no? Yeah. Yeah. But like everything was awesome. Like the story was great. It's incredible to share. I just think, you know, that upfront is like, whoa, $150 million. Now you're in a minute, 10 seconds later, you're talking about an ostracized teen that you're heroically protecting, loving, caring about, and saving. It's right. like, wow, who is this? Like, so you guys, that, that Zeus got a quick contrast because you have both, right? How a similar thing. Um, I think you did a great job as well. Uh, loved hearing you uh, drop into and really pick up on the connection of immigrant and really step into your Zeus and aspirational, heard it go high. Um, so I, I think you did a, a really terrific job. And then I would perhaps also think about how to um, you know, move just a little bit of that story in upfront. And then like, so then you down into a different, more heartfelt and then back up again, a little bit of variance, but we're talking minor distinctions for both of you on brilliant jobs. So thank you, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, Kavan, let's have you go uh, before Kirk this round and then Kirk will bring up the the cleanup. So come on, what'd you have? Uh, great job from uh, both of you. I guess my feedback would kind of be for, for both a little bit is uh, great job. Um, Hala, this was definitely, you were definitely more emotionally connected this one. Like the last one was kind of more head felt like logically thinking about what to say. This one was, was definitely uh, more hard for Hala. I think you had an opportunity to sit there and I think you both did in a sense. Um, so I kind of go one by one, but um Hold on real quick. I just lost my train of thought. Oh, holla. Okay, so this, yeah, is that I think there was an opportunity. You see at the end, she brought out what her objection might have been, that she was thinking that, oh, this might be too expensive when she hears 15 minutes and things of that nature. But I think there was an opportunity to, like, bring her in on that and say, hey, listen, I know what you might be thinking, that this might be expensive or that you might not be able to get a lot of money out of this. And one of my clients were thinking the same thing, that they're only going to get 5000 but we end up able to get that person 300,000 and another person 17 million. So then it's, it's allowed, it's like allows her to step in, 
to those footsteps like wow like that's exactly what I was thinking and wow now I'm able to get that right so it like brings it home for her and Mona I think it was kind of the same thing that oh I know uh, how it feels how you must feel to feel unseen and feel unheard and things of that nature and I remember there were some kids in my school that felt that exact same way that you did and I've always had a passion for making sure the unseen gets seen and by being that champion for them, right? I, I like what you said, Sean, about putting the, the money amount in the first thing as far as I was able to save them. I think it was 120 million or whatever. Um, but I think there's an opportunity to kind of like bring Vivian in on that to where she sees herself in that even more to not just where the story resonates with her, but it's like in her footsteps. Like, I know you must be thinking that you can't afford me or that you may not get that much money out of me or out of this situation, but my client that was thinking the exact same thing was able to get $15 million. Um, so that was the only thing that, that I saw, but you both did an amazing job. And I, I, it's a tie to me too. Like you both got nine out of, nine out of 10 to me. Awesome. Come on. Great. Listen, come on. I'll acknowledge you um, as with David, great feedback. And you are clearly um, working incredibly um, diligently at your influence mastery. So that, that, that was a fantastic round of feedback. Great job. Yeah. And Mr. Kirk Adams, you were lights out first round. What do you got for your feedback on round two, uh, Kirk? Who, who, who do you want first? Yeah, um, you know what? Whichever way you want to. You okay, I'll do it in the order I wrote it. So for Mona, I wrote um, underdogs before she uh, used the word. I wrote, we like people who pull for the underdog. And uh, I wrote that she carried her empathy through and she talked about how um, she used empathy and the way her product would make people feel uh, when she was in retail. And then I, I thought that if she could have carried that through to the U.S. bank, how, how did those people feel that she worked with when they were able to come to their employer and, and deliver $150 million in savings? It sounds like they won the Super Bowl is how, how it would make me feel. Yeah. And so I, I, I wrote down a 9.3. Yeah. And then on Hala, think, Kirk, let me jump in. I think yeah. for everybody, what the job that Hala and Mona are doing, that everybody is doing real raw is extraordinary. It is very challenging in three minutes and three minutes to do this. So um, everybody, fantastic feedback. The judges are lights out, spot on. And the same thing with my feedback as well as all the judges. Everybody is being mindful that these are very limited time windows to do these things in. So in, in the time frames, great job. But no, I mean, it, fantastic feedback, Kirk, great job. Mona yeah. Hatt, and everybody. So please. So for, for Hala, the immigrant story, I, I really wanted to hear just a little bit more about her. Mm -hmm. It's her unique heroic identity. And I, I know you, she talked about her parents. I, I know from a previous incident, she's got nine brothers and sisters. So <laughs> I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Um, so just, uh, you know, her, her own heroic identity, but she really, she, she tied her work and her passion to her why um, really nicely. And the, the conviction just rang through very clearly that she was, she was in it to help people. And she knew about uh, situations where people really needed help from people like her. And uh, I gave her a 9.3 as well. All right. Fantastic job, folks. So let me, let me quick round up. Um, I think David had a jump. Kirk, how was the experience for you as a judge? I uh, was glad I was a judge and not a contestant. It's a much oh, more comfortable you're, you're seat to sit in. You'll be invited to be a contestant soon, my friend. Okay. Um, I, um, I know and love Mona, and now I got mm -hmm. to know Halla, so I feel privileged to be part of this, and I feel a lot of gratitude. Yeah. Uh, to be amongst you today. Yeah. Any breakthroughs or awarenesses for you? Love you too, Kirk. Yeah. Um, awarenesses for me, um, I think just the, the, the humanity. I mean, people were, con people were connecting, people were revealing themselves, people were being a little bit vulnerable, talking about some hard things in a, in a three minute time frame. Um, you know, Vivian mentioned that she cried at the end of. Uh, uh, unblinded mastery um, people talked about really emotional experiences and just a very open um, human way awesome and if somebody's like hey like should i judge on a real raw role play what would you tell them kirk 
Sure. Put 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 on a jacket and tie and wear your sweatpants and be a judge. That's what I would do. <laughs> so, uh, how about you, Kavan? How was your experience and any uh, any breakthroughs for you? Uh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Um, you really see people who are operating at the highest level of influence and of communication, right? Um, and for the time frame and for the impact that you guys had in those three minutes and the way that you see Vivian, like her, her mood changing, right? You see her smile and something, you see her kind of, you know, getting her head a little bit, looking to answer a question. Um, you see her get emotional when it is connecting. Um, so to see kind of like the roller coaster of emotion that you were able to take her through in a three minute time span, uh, span was, was amazing, amazing and great job. Yeah. And come on, I want to acknowledge you. Um, you know, we met uh, a little more than two years ago and the acceleration and you, you know, you're a great speaker then, you know, had great charisma, your, uh, growth and your influence mastery is very clear to me and your ability to articulate, teach, replicate, uh, that is, uh, that's really awesome to, to see and experience. So listening to you judge and the analysis had a lot of uh, great depth to it. And, you know, that, that's awesome. And, that's what is there for you to take your purpose to the world. So that's a great job. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Thank yeah. you, man. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. And so as we bring it home, uh, Hala, any breakthroughs? What's present for you? Well, first of all, uh, this was so much fun, really. I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, everybody was great. Mona, Vivian, all the judges. Um, it's, you don't really know until you do this and you're under that three minute constraint, but it's a great learning process and it's a great way to get out of your comfort zone. Um, I think in the beginning with, with my beautiful, wonderful family coming, it kind of threw me off because <laughs> I didn't know this was happening, um, but it was all good, all beautiful. I enjoyed it. Um, and again, it just, it just confirms how important it is to continuously practice because seeing it, seeing the formula, hearing you talk about, uh, talk about it, seeing other people be in it is different. When you're actually doing it, that's I think where you can appreciate it the most, learn the most. And as you would say, Sean, you know, make those point something distinctions, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it was, it was, you know, a great learning experience and I enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Great job. And Mona, um, what were your biggest takeaways and how was it for you? Uh, I think my biggest takeaway was that I don't often bring in objections and, uh, face them face on when they don't, when the customer or the someone doesn't bring them up. So that was a great takeaway for me to just bring it up before the customer even brings it up or thinking or maybe thinking it. Mm -hmm. um, but what I really got from it is that people, people really relate to stories and who Hala is as a person and as a human being is what really matters. I mean, she could have been an accountant at this point, I think, and it would have been the same thing. You want to know someone's going to fight for you. You know, you want to know someone's going to be there for you. Someone's going to stand up for you in whatever organization they're representing. So at Salesforce, I have, I have access to so many resources and so many people. And my client just basically wants to know that I will make the most of all these resources and all these access points that I have within the company to make them shine and feel awesome, basically. No, outstanding job. And if somebody said, hey, should I be a participant? What would Mona Zalatan say? Yes, absolutely. I think it, uh, it puts you on the spot to be um, really make sure that you're in the formula. It puts you on the spot to study, get your stuff together, and just practice. And like Hala said, I think you said it beautifully, Hala. It's, it's the practice going to make it perfect. And it's not always with the customers that you want to practice it. It's good to practice it outside. No, thank you. I'm out of hell yeah, you should be. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. And let's give some love in the chat for these incredible people. And Vivian, uh, fantastic job on your first day. Will you be coming back for a second day? Yes. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Uh, super fun. Uh, super proud of you. And we're all connecting, deepening relationships. And that's what the Real Raw Role Play is about for the people participating, as well as as you teach it, share it, judge it, participating in it, increasing your skill set for others. And thank you to everybody for watching today. 
Thank you again, Mona, Halla. Um, thank you, Vivian, Kirk, Kavan, and David. Amazing job. We'll see you on the huddle tomorrow morning. I'm Sean Calgi on behalf of Vivian and the entire Unblinded team. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Birthday, Halla. See you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Birthday, Halla. Beautiful. <laughs> Happy birthday. I love your videos. I love your dancing, cooking video. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make some more this weekend. <laughs> Amazing. Aww. Mona, are you still there? I am. Did you notice this was like, you know, a Middle Eastern... To yes, I know. Sean was saying that this morning. He's like, yeah. ooh, is the Middle East coming together? <laughs> Middle East. <laughs> yes, it was fun. Oh, it was it's fun. nice to see you. It's nice, nice to see you guys. Stay safe. Thank yeah, you. our best Happy wish. birthday again. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Ciao. Bye.